All right. Uh, let's do problem number three of the whirly gig problems. And so I'll read it right here. It says, suppose the bottom mass is 150 grams and the rubber stopper is moving in a conical shape as shown. Uh, draw a free body diagram of the stopper. Did you do that? I was looking at some of your whiteboards. I didn't see a free body diagram. Very disappointing. A, determine the mass of the stopper, the centripetal force, and the speed of the stopper, and D, the period of rotation. So I'm going to redraw this little picture right here. So here's what's given. Uh, we've got a, a PVC pipe like this. We've got a string. Here's our rubber stopper. And then we've got a string on it, and that string comes down and hangs on a mass down here. And this mass, I'll call this capital M, is 0 0.150 kilograms. And this is moving around like this in a circle. And uh, this is given to be 40 degrees. So theta equals 40 degrees. And the length of this from here to here is 32, or 0.32 meters. I'll just do everything in meters. And uh, so that's what's given. What are we trying to find? Uh, we want a, hey Mike, I'm, I don't, oh yeah. I'm, I'm recording something right now, so can I talk to you about five minutes or so? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if we got a free body diagram, and then uh, for part, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, A is determine the mass. So we want the free body diagram, that was before part A. And then for part A, we want the mass of uh, the rubber stopper. And B, and I'll call that uh, little m, um, determine, uh, and then we want the centripetal force, F sub C, uh, and then we want the speed of the stopper, I'll call that V, and then D, we want the period of rotation, call that T. Okay. So let's solve it. Now, folks, I'm trying to help you. Draw the free body diagram. Look at this, the guy's frozen right there. So let's just put, here's the rubber stopper. We've got gravity. This is little m times g. And then we've got the string pulling up like this. This is our tension force. And then it's at a 40 degree angle. So here we have ft cosine 40 degrees. And this will be FT sine 40 degrees because we're going to break this up into its X and Y components. So really, that's step uh, two and three of the procedure. Now, we want to know what this mass is. So we know a little bit about the force. Now we, um, And we also need to know what the tension force is. Now, we're going to assume that the tension force is everywhere the same in this string. So I can say, well, the t uh, so for part A, um, I, can, I can sum the forces in the y direction equals z zero. Why does it equal zero in the y direction? Because this little rubber stopper, it's moving in this flat circle, but it's not accelerating up or down at all. So the acceleration is zero. So, so FT sine 40 degrees minus MG equals zero. So this lets us solve for M. So M equals uh, MG. I'm sorry. Uh, put that over there and then divide by G. So we have the tension force times the sine of 40 degrees divided by G. Now you think, well, I don't know what the tension force is. Well, I can draw a free body diagram of this guy. And if I do that, which I'll do over down here. Am I still on screen? Barely. All right. 
So we've got um, big MG, capital MG, and then we've got this tension force. And since this is stationary, um, this this mass right here, it's not accelerating up and down or to, or any in any way. It's in equilibrium. So we know that this tension force is equal to mg. And so that's going to be 0 0.150 kilograms times uh, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now we could just put it mg in there and then the g's will cancel. Uh, but I think I want to know what the tension force actually is in Newton, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate it. Point, point 0.15 times 9.8 equals 1.47 Newtons. So if this is 1.47 Newtons times the sine of 40 degrees divided by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And so that's going to be equal to M. Okay, so uh, 1.47 times the sine of 40 degrees. And I'm going to divide that by 9.8. And I got 0 0.096964 kilograms, or one, two, three, or you can say it's 96.4 grams. So look, it's almost the same mass as this. That's a pretty, that's a much bigger um, rubber stopper than we used in the lab, much bigger. So I can put a box around this, or you can just say M equals 96.4 grams, if, if that's what you prefer. All right, let's do try to squeeze part B in right here. What is the centripetal force? Well, uh, if I sum the forces in the x direction equals MA in the uh, x direction, well, this, this acceleration in the x direction, that's what's making it go in a circle. So this component of the force, of the tension force, is what's making it, the horizontal component is what's making it go in this horizontal circle. So Ft cosine uh, uh, theta equals uh, the centripetal force. And so that's going to be 1.47 newtons times the cosine of 40 degrees and I got 1.13 newtons. Did you guys get that? Anybody get that far? Okay. Now part C, well, um, to get um, the velocity, we know that centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. So if I solve for v, uh, I'm going to get r times the centripetal force divided by the mass. And then I have to take the square root of all of that. Okay, now I need to know what R is. And I'm going to do that over here. If I look at R, R is from here to here. Well, here to here is, is 30, uh, the, the hypotenuse is 32 uh, centimeters. So R is going to be equal to 32, or 0.32 meters. Uh, it's this component of it times the cosine of 40 degrees. So the nice thing about strings is that the geometry of the forces also matches the physical geometry of the problem. 
Okay, so this is going to be equal to uh, 0.32 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And you get uh, 24.5 or 0.245 meters. So I'm going to take the square root of that 0.245 meters times the centripetal force that I calculated over here. Oh, this should say F sub C. Let me fix that. It's not the tension force, it's the centripetal force. So that's going to be uh, 1.13 newtons. So R, times, and then we have the mass. And uh, what mass should I use? Should I use the, the, the mass of the weight here, or should I use the mass of the rubber stopper? And you have to know that. You have to know how to answer that question. Well, what's being accelerated here in your MA? The rubber stopper is being accelerated. So it's the mass of the rubber stopper, which we already have as being 0 0.0964 kilograms. And so V is going to be equal to that. So let's 0.245 times 1.13 uh, divided by 0 0.0964 and then I'm going to take the square root of that and I got 1.69 uh, meters per second anybody get that okay And then for part D, well, this thing is moving in a circle. So I know that V is equal to 2 pi R over the period. So 2 pi R, that's the distance it takes to go around one circle. And then the period, I'm, I'm sorry, um, period is the time it takes to go around once. So the period is going to be equal to 2 pi R over the speed, but we know what the speed is now. So this is going to be 2 pi, and then r is 0.245. That's the radius of the circle, divided by our speed, 1.69. And so it should take Okay, when I pop it into my calculator, I get 0.91 seconds. 0 0.91, uh, I'll round it off, seconds. And that seems about right. That looks about right to me. So a little less than a second to go around one time. Now we could actually set this up as an experiment and see if, it's, if it works. But uh, anyway, so that's a pretty hard problem. A uh, lot of parts to it, and you, you have to get it from the beginning. I mean, you use the answers um, as you go. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So, yeah, that's a hard problem. That is all.